Hello, this is Didith Rodrigo. I am the Executive Director of ARITE, the Creativity and Innovation Hub of the Ateneo de Manila University. I am a professor at the Department of Information Systems and Computer Science. I am also the head of the Ateneo Lab for the Learning Sciences. As part of the ARITE series entitled Our Way Forward, I've prepared this brief presentation on academic continuity in times of crisis. Academic continuity plans refer to a portfolio of strategies and procedures that ensure the continuity of learning and research during extended school closures. The causes of closures tend to have low probabilities of occurring, but have institutional level impacts over substantial periods of time. We are used to student or teacher absences because of illness or travel. We are used to interruptions from regularly scheduled holidays or breaks such as Christmas. At the truly extreme, we have experienced disruptions severe enough to warrant alternative class programs or the cancellation of classes and offices altogether. Examples would be the 1986 EDSA revolution and 2013's Typhoon Haiyan. The current COVID-19 pandemic is somewhere at the upper left quadrant of low probability and high impact. It is disruptive, but one can argue that it is still possible to engage in online learning during the quarantine period. The impact of COVID-19 is widespread, but is, it is not so extreme as to necessitate a complete shutdown of services. Circumstances still allow some level of academic activity to continue. Indeed, it is still feasible and desirable to continue in order to mitigate consequences on students and researchers, most especially those who are graduating and or receiving financial assistance. Unfortunately, the protocols for this crisis are not defined, so it is no surprise that most faculty and students were unprepared when they took place. Faculty were not ready to mass migrate to the virtual world, and students, despite being social media animals, were not ready for the monasticity that online learning imposes, especially when compounded with the anxiety and uncertainty of the times. So how do we plan? Academic continuity planning first requires the establishment of guiding principles and structures. These include a characterization of the circumstances under which the plan should be implemented. Is it indeed still feasible to continue with the academics or should they be halted altogether? During this period, what is it that matters to us most as an institution? What do we hope to achieve or preserve? Is it the mental and emotional well-being of our students, faculty, and staff? Or is it knowledge production and ensuring academic rigor? There is no right answer. This is a determination that each institution must make for themselves based on their identity and their contexts. The university must establish a body that will take the lead in the decision-making process and will oversee implementation. Support structures will have to be established since classes will most likely have to take place online. The online learning infrastructure needs to be robust enough to cope with the additional traffic. Teachers will need assistance with migration and online facilitation. They might also need help thinking of alternative forms of assessment that are cheating resistant. Some students might need technical assistance as well as models of good online learning practices. Students might also need access to administrative support services such as financial aid. They also need access to libraries, labs, or equipment that are not available at home. A variety of academic decisions will then have to be made, first of which has to do with changes to the syllabi. 
How will the syllabus change in terms of scope and timing? How will the course materials be distributed? What communication modes are acceptable? Do students need to use a learning management system to submit requirements? Should they use email or can they use social media? How will instructors communicate feedback? Assessment is a huge issue. How will students be graded? Policies need to be formulated regarding many special cases. Graduating students, students who need to defend their dissertations or their thesis, those undergoing internships or practicum, international exchange students, and those who need to collect data. What happens to students who are already on extension or on probation? What happens to, to students who are serving disciplinary penalties like suspensions? Some courses are more affected than others. For example, setbacks for courses that require sports facilities, laboratories, or fieldwork will be greater than those that rely on readings alone. Researchers with grants are another special case. The university will have to help them communicate with their funders to determine what will happen if certain research activities are no longer possible. During implementation, all these plans must be flexible. There are many students who are disadvantaged in online learning environments. Obviously, those who have limited internet access have their legs cut out from under them. Furthermore, individual characteristics will have an impact on success. The students who need fellow students around them for extrinsic motivation, those who have difficulty self-organizing or self-managing, those who have difficulty focusing, and those who are already feeling isolated might not take to an online learning format as easily as their peers. As the crisis wears on, students and faculty need continuous reassurance. The university needs to communicate its priorities and guiding principles repeatedly. For some, it can help to share best practices for teaching and learning, but for others, these kinds of war stories can create more stress and pressure. Support groups are helpful for teaching, for learning, for company, and for community. As the COVID-19 quarantine continues, several of us have adopted a study with me approach to community. We use Facebook Live or Google Hangouts to broadcast ourselves working. We do not lecture, discuss, or even converse. We do our own thing, and in the process, attempt to create an atmosphere where other people can do their own thing in parallel. Once the crisis is over, students, teachers, administrators, and staff need a debriefing in which they share and critique strategies and tactics. What did they do well? What could they do better? What structures worked? What structures need further improvement? Affirm and recognize what was effective, acknowledge what was not, and try to understand why. Both successes and failures need to feed into the new and improved versions of structures, policies, and processes, so we are better prepared for next time. Ultimately, the goal is not just academic continuity. The goal is academic resilience. This ends my presentation. Thank you for your attention and stay safe.